Hello, hello, and welcome back to Drams for Dummies. I am the biggest dummy of them all, Brett, and I'm so happy to have you back in my kitchen. If it's your first time, thank you so much. Stick with it. Uh, if you like it, do the like and the subscribe and all those things, and then share it with all of your dummy friends that like uh, this kind of content. Uh, what is this channel about? It's about coming, being real, and, uh, and, and, and just drinking the bourbons the way that we drink it, not like the pros drink it, in your kitchen, in your basement, in your garage, in wherever you go, around a bonfire if you watch Joel's episode, right? So thank you for being here. Oh, and speaking of uh, just being normal dum-dums that just, just is how I drink it, look at me. Look at me in the... Uh, <laughs> I got the camera up, so I'm confused. In the Hugh Hefner smoking jacket. That's right. I just thought you'd get fancy. Um, I don't know when you're watching it, but it's a Friday night here. I'm batching it. I got, you know, wife is out for the night. And um, the loser that I am, I got nothing better to do. I went and picked up this brand new bottle. It's hitting the streets. You've maybe seen it. I thought, you know what? I'm going to crack it with my friends and we're going to share it together. So this is the first pour. It's the neck pour. I've been letting it sit for a long time, let it get some air. And being it's a Friday night with nothing better to do, switched all into the bed clothes, you know, just have a relaxing night of some drinking and some hanging out. And then I realized, you know, my, my top is, it's tight. It's a tight top. And I didn't really want to show off everything you know all this awesomeness i didn't want to intimidate you with that um and so i could have just changed my shirt and i thought you know what i don't know why i saw this and thought it's friday night it's my channel let's have fun let's put the smoking jacket on i got the music going i don't have i don't know what it is right now it's not anything exciting i need to really get i need to get some new jams up there i need to stop looking at the camera and I'm trying to adjust myself because I'm grabbing the wrong lapel. Anyway, let's get to this. I didn't do any, I didn't do a whole lot of digging, but I saw, I keep kind of seeing this popping out, uh, uh, you know, in different feeds and, and, and places uh, that you pay attention to. Uh, old Overholt cask strength, 10 year. Old Overholt is a Jim Beam product. Uh, the rumor has it that it's, it's really just the Jim Beam rye regular juice in there right now um but obviously it's aged out to 10 it's cast string it's a 121 proof um i think that they are going back to an old school mash bill with a with a um a different type of rye i think that's coming that's a rumor so i don't know if this product's going to change down the road or not but this is what we have now i've been hearing all kinds of good things um we, we went over to my bubbles and uh, they had they had a bunch of it, they had five cases of it. So it's supposed to be a regular release. It looks that way. I thought I had to rush over there and grab one. So it was going to be like one of, you know, a few. And uh, so hopefully you can find it on your shelves. It's not cheap. It's 90 bucks, I think, MSRP. But if you kind of figure the $10 per year of age, we're kind of right there. Um, and coming out of a legacy distillery, um, you know, you, you're hoping they're doing it right and doing good stuff. And from, I, I haven't read in, I haven't tried to dig into all the reviews. I don't remember what anyone's tasting notes are, but the things I'm seeing have been pretty positive. So I was pretty excited to get this. So without further ado, let's dive in. Chaos across the street. I don't know what's going on over there. All right, swirl it, twirl it. Give it a little SJ, a la Matt Porter. Cheers, Matt Porter. So whenever you're watching this, I hope everything's going great for you. I hope you're able to enjoy a good dram of something nice. Oh, I didn't even give a shout out. Speaking of Joel, look what I'm working with here. He uh, made these awesome. I'm not going to pick that one up. It's the same but black. 3D printed risers for like the glasses for like rankings. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to use those exactly. And... But I've decided. I've realized with the with the camera and the closeness, I can get a little elevation and get things a little closer to the camera. Uh, so I'm just trying it out. This will probably last this episode, because I'll probably hit it and spin it, and it'll fly off, and then we'll have to, you know, go get a new Rickhouse KC glass. What I'd have to do first. All right, let's see what's going on here. Ooh, man. 
man. The music's distracting me. For a, I will say, for an initial smell, I haven't had anything to drink today. Gosh darn it, I did that last last video. Um, I need to do the swirl. I need to do the Evan Williams black swirl swirl job through the mouth, you know. Um, I will say for an initial crack, for a neck pour, for a, this thing hasn't had time to open up too much, really nice nose on the front end. It's, it's, um... And I'm gonna not I'm not gonna lie to you. I saw someone say this, and I and I agree a lot. It 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 feels like it's just a a high rye bourbon. It feels very Jim Beam. It feels very. It's got that old granddad. It's got the old granddad 114 bottle. Literally, it's a great bottle. Um, it just has that rich, deep, um, oaky caramel. But ooh, there's like a there's definitely some cherry in it. And there's there is that there is that rye spice kind of tickling up in the nose. Let me get a little drink and just kind of get everything acclimated here. Huh. Okay. Um, as soon as it hits the palate, it starts it starts rocking and rolling in there, just kind of sitting in there, starting to party a little bit. And it was very peppery in there. Very peppery, very black pepper. And kind of, um, and then through the through the swallow, through the palate, through the finish, that pepperiness is was very prevalent on that first drink. Very drying. Long finish. Kind of back of the back of the back of the palate here is still kind of ringing a little bit. But again, that was the first drink, so I don't know how legit that was. So. Let me uh, let me swirl her around a little bit. Let's get some scores on this guy. Man, that's really nice. It's got. I mean, it, it, if you're thinking this is just the the 51 or whatever percent, I don't even know rye Jim Beam mash bill. Uh, it definitely kind of has. A, I mean, you're getting there's corn influence in there. It's rounded. It's not spiky in the in the on the nose. It is so nice. This is a really nice nose. It's it, it's it. The proof burns you. The, it, it gets you a little bit in there. There's definitely that oak, that ten year oak. This is really nice. I mean, this just feels like I think when you. People think about a bourbon. If if they were to nose this, they would just think this is this is this is bourbon. I mean, it's not sweet. It's not that sugary sweet kind of uh, bourbon, super fruity. It's definitely in that darker, richer world, which I love. It's different every time you come back to it. There's a little chocolate in there too. And a little coffee. Yeah, there's like there's definitely some coffee in there. I love all that. Chocolate, coffee, leather, oak, caramels, um, molasses, you know, just the rich, the rich things I love. Um, I'm giving that a nine on the nose. That cat might be a nine five nose. Ooh, that was, I got a little something different there. I don't know if I was getting soap from my hands. I might have been soap from my hands. Don't wash, just don't wash your hands, and uh, that won't mess up your your tasting. Let me get some warmth on this thing. Warm it up. Oh, I don't know if that little minute of little second of warming made a difference, but more of the sweetness came out there. So nice. It's really good. It's really good. Finish runs for a while. A little drying in the back. It's okay though. It's not bothering me. It's not. A, it's not putting me off. But it's a little drying.
Mmm. Man. That chocolate that richness really comes into that palate as it keeps, I feel like it just gets better every drink. Um. Mmm. Is this a top shelfer? I think this might be a top shelfer. I mean, I, I'm in a good mood. I mean, how can you not feel uh, happy and celebratory when you're wearing this awesomeness, right? And next time I'll, I'll, I'll break it out for some special occasion, no top underneath. That way as I move around, maybe you get a little, little peek. You know what I'm saying? You little dirty birds. You wanna see what's under this robe. And now I'm just getting distracted. I was gonna make scores. I'm gonna do one more. I poured a pretty heavy pour. Ooh, actually, all right, I'll do a little sip. Oof. It hits different every time between the proof and the age and the rye, heavy ryeness, heavy ryeness, I don't know. It, it's like every time you, you, it, you, if you don't drink it right and, and it, whatever, it sort of does something different. Um. I think I'm going to go eight and seven on the finish. It's, it's, it's a 7.5 on the finish. It might be an 8.5 on the palate too. It kind of depends on which drink I have. The one before last, that was kind of probably 8.5 or 9. And then that one was like, ooh, I did something different. And maybe it kind of shifted, it it got, it went down a little bit. I feel very safe on eight. So I have a nine nose, I have an eight palette, I have a 7.5 finish. I think this is gonna, that's gonna be a top shelfer. Edit for the calculations. 8.2. Boop, 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 boop. Top shelf for the old Overholt cast strength. Ten year. <sighs> if you've been watching, I don't think I've had a top shelf come across the channel yet. I think I've had a lot of, I mean, my guests have brought me, everything's been kind of in the sevens. Well, I keep saying that and I keep overlooking blind barrels. Um, and yeah, um, Bobby and, and crew, uh, that would have been their Nashville Barrel Company. Oh, I haven't even done that one yet. I haven't released that yet. Act like I didn't say that. This is really good. Um, grab it. You like? I, I would say for anybody, it, the price pat, the price point's a little high, but feel good about it. But know you're gonna get uh, legitimate uh, good stuff. You're paying for. You're you're getting what you pay for. Um, if you're a Jim Beam fan, you definitely have that. You have th that nuttiness is in there. I mean, it's Jim Beam. It's Jim Beam. If you're like, I'm not a huge rye person, maybe this is one to try because it's not there. It's not super high rye, uh, but it's it's kind of it's in a it's it's kind of a middle uh, ground. Uh, but it definitely has some spice and kick to it. Black pepper spice for sure. Drying spice for sure. But what I want to do real quick. Just for the fun of it, um, I didn't. I don't even know if I'm going to leave this in the video, um, and I might not. But but just for the sake of it, I'm going to bring this across. And where am I going? How am I going to do this? Put this here. Put that there. So this is ADHD whiskey. Matt Porter's rare character single barrel pick. This is this has been on my top shelf since the day I got it. Um, but you, and you can see I've, I've enjoyed it quite a bit, right? I don't drink, I've got enough bottles that I don't drink str the good stuff very often. So for there to be this little left means I've enjoyed this over its time, but it's been with, with me a while and I haven't had it for a very long time. And I thought, you know what, what is something that kind of goes with this old overhold at 121 and lo and behold, this, uh, rare character, straight rye whiskey, uh, 121.2. This is a six year, I think six month. This is a 10 year. So we have an age difference. This is a 95.5. So this is rye, rye, rye to the max. Can I get that on that same? Look at this. Look at me trying to figure out the, the deals, right? 
Cool. Don't fall off. All right, so I just want to do it for the fun of it. We'll see if it stays in the video or not. I, I'm not going to really necessarily score, but I just want to see. They don't. They compare in proof. They compare that they are technically rise. They don't really compare in the amount of rye, and they don't fully compare in their years. So they're different deals. And this guy's been open for a long time. This guy's brand new. I don't know. There's different things going on here. But this guy just earned his way on, top, on the top shelf. This guy's on the top shelf. Let's just see how they drink together. <laughs> Holy different thing that is. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so where this one is like that rich, earthy... Mm, you know, very bourbon-esque. This one is brighter. It's a little bit more one note than this one. This one, every, whenever, whenever I come back to, to the old Overholt, uh, it's, it's doing a little something different. This one is doing the same thing, but it's doing it really well. But this has got a lot of citrus in it. It's It's got a nice spicy thing happening but it's not overpowering by any stretch it's kind of in the background man it's so good it's it's a different experience this is a rye rye man like this is 95.5 but it's not overpowering and it doesn't like it's it's it it, it it's very well balanced, but it's like, it's electric in the mouth. The brightness, some of that brightness and citrus are in there, but there's other things going on. I think that rye spice almost kind of comes off for me, some of like almost that dusty-ish note too. There's that little dusty funkiness to it because it's just so high rye, but it's really, really good. It's just, these are just different animals. This one feels a little bit, maybe like a warmer weather drink because it's brighter, lighter in that regard. This one feels like the richer, more traditional uh, sit around a campfire. Let me just see what they do next to each other. I'm curious. I kind of, before I do it, I feel like the nose of the old, old overhaul is going to win me over the nose of the rare character. But the palette of the rare character is so unique and different that I might prefer it a little bit. But again, it feels like it, it could be the same every time. Really unique and fun, but the same. And that's like going to a restaurant. You know, you, I'm, a, I'm kind of a foodie too. And you get something and there's like a good amount on the plate. And this happens with pasta a lot. And that first bite, you're like, that's amazing. And then you just keep eating. After a while, you're like, okay, all right, I got it. Like it's just... Since it's all blended together, you get the same experience every bite. And so, like Aaron and I like to go to places and do small plates and trade and share, get a few bites of everything. That's kind of so, that's kind of where nose preference for me and palate. I like it being a little different every time, which can be pro and con. It can sometimes hit right, sometimes hit wrong, but at least it's fun and different. This one could be the one that sort of just does the same thing every time and it's cool and fun, but. Maybe this one wins for complexity. That's a lot of chat, and let's see what happens here. Um, huh. Yeah, now now next to this one, like the caramel of this, the richness of this is really prevalent. It's kind of bringing out the sweet of this a little bit. Oh, oh, whoa. Side by side. Again, in a vacuum is where you're going to get your true scores. That's why this is, this is an 8.2 for me. Now I don't know what's happening. This almost dill pickle thing came rolling out of this initially and then when I went back it went away but coming right off this <sighs> yeah like almost like a, it's like a yogurty dilly soury something it's back in there and it's not even again it's not even off-putting it's just weird and different right, let me go this way it's good so good. A little mint. There is the minty there. I got that mint of that rye in there. Back that back of the tongues. That's something that's been newer for me. Like that back side of the sides of the tongue. Mm -hmm. Kind of lighten up. This one lights that one up. Okay. No cleanse. We're just gonna go in. There's so many things dancing through this. That 95.5 is a lot. That's a lot of things. <laughs> 
And I know it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for your just if you're just a regular bourbon drinker coming into a 95.5 like this one might might be off putting because every time you come in, there's like that's that, that's weird, but it's fun. That's so good. God, that's good. It's just different. They're just different. And I think that's I think that's awesome. Um, the minty, the citrus, um, that kind of effervescent almost in this that, that's in this one. I don't know. I was gonna make a beat out of that. It didn't quite work out the way I want to. Um, but this one, yeah. If you're looking for bright, interesting, unique, different, and again, I'm pointing to this one like you're going to go on the shelf and find it. You're not. But it is MGP 95.5. So if you were to see that MGP 95.5 or that 95.5 mash bill at all, you know, you could kind of say, well, I saw that hashtag bourbon burps. I saw that dummy Brett talking about that. Those are going to, I want to get that because that sounds like an interesting ride. This guy right here, traditional. You got your spice that maybe if you're if you're a rye, you like the rye and you like a little bit more of a rye and spice, you get that with this one, but you're getting so much more traditional notes, more rich notes. It, this would just be a choose your own adventure. They're gonna both go to my top they both are on my top shelf at this point. And it's just like, what am I looking for today? Is it quiet and I just wanna chill out? Or am I pouring it for friends and I wanna like have this, we're having kind of a loud, we got the music turned up or whatever. So this was a long video. Um, trying to get shorter for you guys, but it's just, I mean, again, it's Friday night. Like I'm sitting here in the smoking jacket. I mean, I got booze all around. Like let's, let's just hang out and keep partying. This would be a good night for a live stream. Let's just do a live stream right now. No, I'm kidding. We're not going to do that. I don't know when I'm going to do a, a live stream. I think we need to get to, I think the number for me is, um, at a hundred subscribers on the YouTube We'll do a live stream to celebrate that. And who knows who signs on with that and who enjoys the, that experience. But uh, we'll make it a big deal. And we're not, we're not there. We're about halfway there. Uh, so if you're liking the goofiness, the dumbness, the relatability of what we're doing, again, like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. Tell me how you're feeling about things. Share it with your friends. Tell them to do the same. Think about being a patron. See if I swipe that across the bottom right now. It's just Drams for Dummies at, at, uh, at Patreon. Uh, but thank you so much. Whenever you watch this, if you were killing time at work, killing time over the weekend, trying to get away from friends or family or whatever, just having fun, just going down the rabbit hole, and this is this is video number 48 in your, in your journey, whatever you're doing right now, you're awesome. I love you for watching. And if you're listening to this and you made it this far, I'd really love you. You're doing great things. Keep doing what you're doing. Be a little better tomorrow. And if you're not subscribed or a patron at this point, if you haven't shared it with folks, if you haven't participated yet with the channel, then my love for you is real, but we have we can we can still grow this relationship and that's how we can do that and that's how you can be a little bit better today or tomorrow. Liking, subscribing, patron, sharing. Love you guys. Bye-bye. I'm going to go hang out and pet my nipples in my smoking jacket. That's Aaron's going to tell me to edit that.